a Kangaroo Fern production. Welcome, Welcome to Gorilla Podcast, Fresh Eyes. We, with Story Dogs, it's a one-on-one reading program. The children are actually selected by the teachers. So there may be children that who are reluctant readers who may not want to read in front of an adult, but the presence of a dog gives them confidence. Some children may be quite good readers, but not they don't feel that they're very confident at their reading. Some children may just not feel comfortable. They're not, they don't have a lot of self-confidence. So having the presence of a dog, and the children are very much aware that we're there with our dogs, but we relay everything through the dogs. So an example would be that if we're reading a book and I might say, well, Secret doesn't quite understand what this word means. Would you be able to help Secret with that word? Or would you be able to help Secret what's happening on this page? Or, or I would say something like, Miss Fergie, this is a brand new book. Miss Fergie hasn't heard this book before. So would you like to be able to read to them? So that's how the program, we're a one-on-one program. So the children can build up their confidence with reading and and I, as a coordinator and as a volunteer with the program, I can see the difference that it's making with some of these children who now be, who were first a little bit reluctant and weren't quite sure and then are very happy to come each week to read. So how is the story dog started? How did this program start? Yeah, the program started. In 2009, um, Janine Sigley and Leah Sheldon were both had their children going to, I think it was the Marumbala East uh, Public School in New South Wales. And they'd heard about a a program called the Read Program in Utah, which was a reading education assistance dog reading program in Utah. And they'd heard about this program and thought, "Hmm, this might be quite a good thing because they could obviously see that there were some children that weren't very confident readers so they had approached the staff and the principal at the school and at first, I think their first reaction from the principal was, oh yeah, we'll give it a year. We'll see how it goes. Once they'd started the program, he could see the difference that the children, that it was making for these children, how eager they were to read. They could see the difference in, in the levels of the children's reading. So that was how the program started. So last year, we celebrated our 10th anniversary with Story Dogs. We currently have over two and a half thousand children on the program that will probably be reading to a dog in the week. We have around 500 dog teams. We are Australia wide apart from the Territory. We don't have anything in the Northern Territory. And we have currently about 310 schools that are a part mm-hmm. of the program. But we would love it to be Australia-wide. Mm-hmm. That is the aim of, of Story Dogs. We're a non-for-profit. Um, I'm a volunteer with the program as the coordinator and volunteer with the program as well. And I was just so impressed with how they run and how they treat us as volunteers and coordinators. So what is the main mission of the Story Dogs? The main mission of Story Dogs is for children to become confident lifelong readers. Reading is the essence of of everything really, isn't it? And we're so much of today of a lot of um, computers and technology to be able to hold a book and to read a book and to share those journeys in the book and not a better way than to share it with a dog that um, gives you some confidence and shows you unconditional love is the best way to be able to do reading. What do you think the... Because, as you said, it's everything now is digital right mm. now. What, what what do you think is the... Is there any obstacle of the story dogs to... Because some kids now, it's always on the iPad, always mm. on... Um, instead of reading books, is that a big obstacle with story dogs? I don't see that as an obstacle with story dogs. You have a dog involved, children want to be able to go and see the dogs. And I have to say, when I 
when I go to the school, it's always, hello, secret. Hello, Miss Fergie. We're always second. And that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. The dogs are the essence of to why, is to why the children want to be able to read. So they know that we're there, but they can read to the dog. They can sit with the dogs. They can relate to the dogs. The dogs love being around the children and show their love to them. I don't think my personal view is that these programs will stop because of that. I think because of the digital, we can still have that. But I think to hold a book and to look at a book, we get to know the children that you read with as well. So I get to know what books the children like to read and what, you know, what levels that they're easy. You don't want children struggling. Mm -hmm. There's no... There's no good in it's no good in getting a book that's really hard for a child that is struggling. So you want to be able to get them a book. There are there are times when we've started a book and I'll we'll say to them, Oh, I don't know whether we really like this book. What do you think, Secret? Or what do you think, Miss Fergie? And then we can change the books for the children if they don't seem to be enjoying that. But you you try and find the books that the that the children love to read and are interested in what their focus is on. How is important? How is how is how is important the reading? How is important? Sorry, what was the question? Sorry. How how is important the reading to like for the children? The reading, yeah, it's, it's important for children to be able to understand reading. As you, I mean, we need to be able to read and to understand and to get a knowledge of words. Mm -hmm. Initially, when we're reading with the children, punctuation, all that, it doesn't matter. We don't do a lot of corrections then. You want to be able to get the children just to understand reading and to enjoy it. If we were pushing at the children, trying to correct all mm -hmm. the time, they would get quite uncomfortable with that and would feel a little embarrassed. So that all comes in time. It's a matter of the children enjoying the book, looking at a book, enjoying a story, having an adventure reading with the dogs some kids is very fear fearful on on reading yes so is the story dogs helps that helps that yeah and and the teachers pick out the children and i in my time we don't often get to see or hear from the parents I've been fortunate in some times where I've run into the parents at the schools. I often try and go to assemblies with the dogs and and meet the school community. And I've been very fortunate to meet the parents and they'll say to me, oh, Natalie, it is just so wonderful how story dogs, how my child is going with story dogs. There was a little boy I used to um, read with. His English was his second language. And the first books we started out, he was very limited in his reading. By the end, when he finished the program, his reading was astounding. And his mum would approach me and say just how much he'd improved with his reading and his confidence had soared because of that. So that's how that works, is building up children's confidence, trust also in me as bringing the dogs along, trust in me as the person that is there. And and some of the best times with the children is when we walk to and back from the classrooms and ask the children how their week's been and what they've been doing. So you get to know these children and you, you get to know how they are and their response to the dogs that they're reading to. Is there any good stories? What's the reaction of the parents or the school that you're doing the program? The schools love them. We we have the schools um, each year their only um, responsibility because we don't charge okay. for going into the school. We are volunteers. So their responsibility is to have a, a story dogs, annual story dogs day. That's usually the first Friday in May. So the schools can have a fundraiser, whatever. We might have an orange day or, you know, come dressed in your pyjamas or give a gold coin donation or have your favourite dog picture. The school's responses have been amazing, just wonderful. The teachers that I get to meet and to talk to, I have a lot of schools that want to take the program on, but I just don't have a lot of the volunteers trained at the moment. So I have a lot of people or schools that say, we'd really love, we've heard about your program, we've, we've looked at your Facebook page, we've seen some videos and we'd really love to have 
a stray dog at your school. So I take their information, they'll fill in forms that I have them on my record. So I'd love more teams. I currently have uh, a team that I'm starting off in our Drossen Area School. I have um, a team at Prospect North Primary and I'm I'm hoping to be training a couple of people in, in next term to branch out here in Adelaide.